Thank you, Brian. Um, I was pretty sure I was going to be able to hold the American for 20 minutes. I'm not so sure about the Cuban. Um, <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to ask you uh, is to please hold your questions until the end. We want our presenters to be provocative, and I know there are many different interpretations and views of some of these topics. And I promise I'm going to allow for plenty of time for questions later on. So if you can please hold on to your questions until the end and then let Pedro speak. Pedro? Well, thank you. Uh, really, Brian has brought up uh, at the end some very profound thoughts that uh, revolve around the outcome of the Bay of Pig disaster. There has been historically many military disasters. History recorded, for example, the Gallipoli landing during World War I was a major disaster. Over 160,000 men from both sides died on that disaster. And within a few months, the Allies had to retreat from Gallipoli. There was, in World War II, the Dieppe raids. That was another major disaster, a landing disaster where in less than five hours, the Allies, mostly Can Canadians, Canadians had over 60% casualties in few hours. So there had been many amphibious disaster, not counting uh, the Operation Market Garden in World War II. Uh, recorded in the movies A Bridge Too Far. That was another another disaster. So there has been, but for some reason, the Bay of Pig has caught the attention of the world. Uh, it's one of the most better known, not understood, but known military disaster of modern times. There was, years ago, a couple of centuries ago, what they called the, the Charge of the Light Brigade uh, that was considered and became, uh, several movies were, were done about the Charge of the Light Brigade. Errol Flynn was one of the, the main characters. Of, but the, the Bay of Peak has certain elements Brian mentioned one is the confrontation between two young charismatic leaders, John Kennedy and Fidel Castro. At the time, Fidel, either we like it or not, he was highly popular throughout the world. And John Kennedy was also a promise, very popular and charismatic. So there you have two elements, the confrontation of, of. Second, then you have the Bay of Peak in the context of the Cold War. And as Castro accelerated the Marxist model, then the possibility, the potential that the Soviet could deploy nuclear missiles in Cuba became an issue. So it was another a piece of very highly relevant uh, information during the Cold War. Was also the first <coughs> major defeat, humiliation of the United States in the Western Hemisphere. And probably among the worst after World War II. And the fourth element is mass media. E TV has, was already in place, and it went throughout the world visually. So all these elements create in the Bay of Peak a client, a, a, an aura that few other military disasters had achieved. Even some, even much worse military, military disasters. 
like the Charge of the Light Brigade, it had elements of lack of leadership. Brian was referring to things worse than lack of leadership. Poor judgment, incompetence, and heroic fight. So all these elements were present. I, in a way, will embrace your point that we might have to look, make a better look at what uh, at Kennedy's on on his. I call it erratic. Could be even cowardly, but erratic. But but now you had brought something else into the picture that we will have to look into with more 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 careful. Now, the Washington reaction to the issue of national security was made very clear by Ike Eisenhower when he authorized the CIA to start forming a Cuban combat teams to help. At first, they did not thought about forming a brigade, a combat brigade to land in Cuba. The first thought was, let's help the underground and the guerrillas fighting in the mountains. And that, this is the first thoughts of the Eisenhower administration. But Eisenhower makes something very clear, and I quote from when he says, the United States will not tolerate a Soviet base 90 miles from the United States. This was a warning and a public statement by the President of the United States at the time. In that same meeting, and, and the pop, this, this first part was made public, this second is then instructions to the CIA, which is in charge of the operation. He says, and I quote, quote our hands should do, cannot be shown in any scene that we do. This is a Cuban operation should be done by Cubans. The U.S. hands cannot be shown. I do believe this is one of the first mistakes. Because now you are putting a ceiling. You're putting a limit. The cover story is the Bay of, the Bay of Peak is an old Cuban operation financed by Cubans to be fought by Cubans. So if for some reasons a better equipment was needed, but it could blow the cover story, then don't buy it. Don't get them. So that brings us to the old ships where, where we travel, where when the winch began just picking up the boats, I thought they will wake up, not in the coast, but way inside because the noise was horrible. All winches. So very old boats, the ships, because they could not be, be above that ceiling. This was an old Cuban operation, and to make it believable, you had to have certain. So that was a mistake done before Kennedy was elected president. That ceiling was created, and the idea was this is an old Cuban operation. So. It became a fact that eventually 
the magnitude of the operation was so big that you couldn't fake the U.S. participation. So you are now dealing with something that intelligent people were believing the unbelievable. It, it, I wonder how we're talking about highly intelligent people. And now they create this fake. They believe the fake. Nobody even after the cover story was blown up at the UN in the United Nations when they confused the pictures of the Cuban B-26 with the Cuban, with the, the pictures of the, and, and Roa show. No, you are mistaken, Mr. Stevenson. You are wrong. This is the wrong plane. You show us the wrong. The cover story was gone. And they still hang to the idea that this is an old Cuban operation, etc. So, now, this is a vital issue that many times is lost in a larger picture. It was made clear from the beginning that this was above anything else an air operation. And they are documents, and I will get you one, that specifically stated without control of the air, the brigade will be doomed before landing. So it was made clear Kennedy, and let me just read back for a moment something that I don't want to miss to tell you. In. The first plan was not the Bay of Pig. Was the landing was supposed to happen in Casilla Trinidad. When Kennedy is brief after he is elected president, a few days later, your friend Alan Dulles goes to visit Kennedy and tells, appraise him of the secret operation on Trinidad. The Bay of Pig was not even, the name was any place. It was a Trinidad, the Casilda Trinidad landing. And that was the plan. In every scene was around Casilda Trinidad. After he is elected president, the Casilda Trinidad plan is still on the table, and he received a memo from the planners, January 4th, 1961. And it specifically tells Kennedy, it is crucial that the Cuban Air Force be knocked out, destroyed, or neutralized before our amphibious ships make their final run into the beaches. It was clear. It was as specific. There were no doubts. This was air, and air control operation was the vital element of this operation. And just to briefly, two minutes digress, this is so important. The most difficult military operation is a landing, amphibious landing operation. For, for many reasons, and if you fail in modern times to control the air, you, it will fail. You have two examples in World War II. Normandy, with total, absolute control of the air. The area in Omaha Beach almost failed. Eisenhower, 
it reached a point that he wrote and put in his pocket the comment of, we had been thrown out. That's how close it was to be defeated at Omaha Beach and thrown out. The British that had better success at their three beaches, they were supposed to capture the city of Cain within the first day of the landing. It took them four weeks to take Cain. We're talking about with full control of the air. You go to the landing in Aranzio, World War II in Italy, close to, by the way, beautiful areas. Today, a tourist area south of Rome. The, the cruisers and destroyers had to get close to the beach and pound the Germans because they were very close of throwing the, the, the American troops into the sea. So we're talking about a very difficult operation. And it was made clear to Kennedy, without air control, the brigade will be doomed. And it was very clear, we have to destroy Castro's forces before the landing take place. On January 30th, 1961, both Kennedy and the Pentagon approved the Trinidad plan. But within few weeks, maybe two or three weeks, we're now talking in February, there were now high officials in the Kennedy administration, and maybe Kennedy, that began having doubts on the feasibility of this operation. I, I'm not going to enter because there is a lot of information around this, and you can get it on many of their memoirs. But one of the most staunch critics of the operation was Dean Rusk, the Secretary of State. You cannot get higher. The President, the Vice President, the Secretary of State, Dean Rusk, did, was not in favor to a point that when Kennedy brought his main advisors to the White House to get the consensus on the operation, Dean Rusk, when the vote was taken, Dean Rusk abstained. Senator Fulbright opposed the landing. The rest went along, and on the 13th of April, I mean, I'm sorry, it could be the 10th. It's, the order was given for the operation to go on. Let me see if I can, uh, ta, 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 was on, I'm sorry, April the 4th. On April the 4th, <coughs> Kennedy pulled his closest advisors. And as I said, Dean Rusk excused himself and did not vote, abstained. Fulbright opposed, the rest went along. This, the day was set for April 17. But four weeks before, during the debate, should we go alone or not? Dean Rusk proposed to change the landing site. Four weeks before the invasion, the landing site was changed from Trinidad to the Bay of Peak. There is a book called Decision for Disaster, written by a heroic friend, friend of and uh, Greystone Lynch, that actually you knew him very well. He just died. Uh, and Greystone Lynch, by the way, landed with the Hombres Ranas 
the fragments at the Bay of Pig. And Grayson Lynch called this the decision for disaster. We know, we know today by the Cuban sources that the Castro's jet 33 plane that survived what we'll, we'll go into right now couldn't reach, didn't have the range to reach, to reach Trinidad. They were able to reach the Bay of Peak. So their best plane that survived the attacks were not available for the Trinidad area. So again, now we have that they changed from Trinidad to the Bay of Pig. And then comes the fateful, terrible decisions. A few days, the operation was, was ordered. All the brigade in the different areas began moving. The infiltration teams went into Cuba to prepare, and you all know and have many dear friends that, that survived, and some others that were captured and killed and shot by, by Castro. Uh, so the infiltration teams were moved move to Cuba. All, all the naval uh, uh, crews got into their boats. Uh, the pilots went to their planes. The battalion began moving to their different assigned areas, and the operation was put in motion. The day before, April 14, the day before the first air raid on Castro's bases, Kennedy calls Richard Bissell and asks him, how many planes are going on the first attack? And Bissell told him, all of them. I think we're 16. And Kennedy says, there are too many. Cut it in half. So the first punch, the crucial punch, was cut in half. And also, you lost the surprise factor. So that was a huge mistake. Castro was left with seven planes. But now, if you think this was a big mistake, which it was, what came then was horrible. Because after that, we have all this problem in the United Nations, etc., that I mentioned. Stevenson protesting. And Kennedy canceled all the remaining airstrikes, all of them. There were four more airstrikes, they were canceled. Therefore, the basic premise of the Bay of Pig, control of the air, you must destroy Castro's Air Force before the, boat, the, 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 the ships hit the beaches, were not fulfilled. And it doomed, to me, is a call of heroism, how in those conditions they fought the brigade, the battalions that were able to land, fought with the ammunition that they went down with to the beaches, what they brought on their backpack when they landed. That was it. So they ran out of ammunition, they fought for almost three days, which was a heroic fight. Just to give you an idea, and I don't want to enter into this, and this is my last, my last comment. For some tactical reasons, there were two choke points at the Bay of Peak. One was San Blas, and the other one was Palpit. The paratroopers on San Blas landed on the right place, and the brigade could hold control San Blas. For some reason, some of the paratroopers on Palpite were over, 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 they overthrown. Some of them landed 
on the cienagas, on the swamps, and Palpite was not completely controlled. The Castro's forces never, at any time, broke to San Blas, where the brigade was well entrenched. They entered through Palpite after heroic fight, especially in an area called La Rotonda. But that's another story. And I will say that in military history, this is a major disaster. But it's second to none in the courage displayed by the Brigade 2506. Thank you.